Prince Crocodile by Bonnie Becker and illustrated by David Small. The illustrations are great. Here's the first one. Can you see them? There's everybody Christmas caroling. The Christmas crocodile didn't mean to be bad. Not really. Alice Jane found him on Christmas Eve under the tree. He wore a red bow around his neck. It was lovely. Except he ate it. Then he ate a couple of presents, just little ones, and he gnawed on Father's shoe, ate the wreath in the hall, and ran away with a cr Christmas roast, a big one. He was eating up Christmas, and no one knew what to do with him. There he goes, he's got the roast, and he's running down the hallway. Send the beast to Africa, huffed Uncle Theodore who had once hunted wild game there. There's Uncle Theodore. He must be put in an orphanage, fretted Aunt Figgy, who was worried a lot, especially about orphans. Lock him in the back room, Alice Jane, instructed Father, while we consider the situation. Better give him the pumpkin pie, said Mother. He still looks hungry. Alice Jane crossed her arms and tapped her toe while the Christmas crocodile slunk into the back room. She closed and locked the door with a firm click. But then she thought she heard him sniffling. Not feeling hungry after all, she slipped him the pineapple upside down cake along with the pie. We could make him into a pair of shoes, said Uncle Theodore, who was busy considering things in the back parlor. Or a pet for some orphans, said Aunt Figgy. I wonder whose presents he ate, said Cousin Elwood, who finally finished eating all the fudge the crocodile had missed and could now speak. He's nice, said Alice Jane. Maybe we could keep him. Unheard of, protested Aunt Figgy. But it's Christmas, said Alice Jane. Irrelevant, huffed, har, humped Uncle Theodore. He's just a little hungry, that's all, said Alice Jane. Perhaps the zoo would take him, Father said worriedly. He needs a real home, cried Alice Jane. We'll think about it, dear, said Mother, and she sent them all to bed. The Christmas crocodile didn't mean to be bad, not really. But in the middle of the night, he ate through the back room door, swallowed 29 crumpets on the kitchen counter, a box of pralines, one fruitcake, five golden oranges, the left stove top burner, and a plate of ginger star cookies. Those were for Santa. Then he crept upstairs. One door was open just a bit. He nuzzled it open a little more. Inside, he found a tasty talcum powder, a feather boa that tickled his tongue, and a swig of perfume, just right. Then he found ten pink toes. He sniffed them. Hmm. He licked them. Yum. He took a teeny tiny bite. and made the dust dance on the bottle of wine in the cellar. I'll save you, roared Uncle Theodore, waking with a start from a dream about cannibals. Run for your lives, shrieked Cousin Elwood. There's blood, gasped Aunt Figgy, pointing to a pinprick of red on her little toe. Where is he, sighed Mother. What a chaos there. Look at the crocodile. The Christmas crocodile didn't mean to be bad.
Not really. They found him hiding under Alice Jane's bed. He tried to wiggle his tail in a friendly fashion, but it was too cramped. Into the cellar with him, commanded Father. The Christmas crocodile scooted sadly down the stairs to the basement. He shivered in the cold, but Alice Jane crossed her arms and tapped her toe. She closed and locked the door with a firm click. She went back to bed and lay under her warm blanket. She swallowed a lump in her throat. Somehow, it didn't feel like the night before Christmas anymore. She slipped out of bed, her blanket held close, and crept quietly down the stairs to the basement. She wrapped the crocodile snugly, tucking her blanket under his chin. She found an old candy cane covered with lint in her bathrobe pocket. She broke it in two. One for me and one for you, she whispered. The Christmas crocodile gulped happily and closed his eyes. The cellar door creaked open. You know, he could be an orphan, hissed Aunt Figgy, slipping inside. She tucked her hot water bottle under the croc's toes. A crocodile saved my life once, announced Uncle Theodore, coming in behind Aunt Figgy. Decent chap, really. He spread his Zulu robe over the crocodile's tail. Perhaps he's learned his lesson, said Father, peering around the door and holding up his red earmuffs. Is it time to open President's presents yet? Yawned Cousin Elwood, oh. stumbling in. He patted the crocodile on the snout and fell fast asleep. Mother came last. She spread a fluffy comforter across them all. We couldn't leave him alone, she said, not on Christmas Eve. Everyone nodded. The Christmas crocodile let out a contented snore. Full at last observed father. Everyone sighed. <sighs> then they all settled down to wait and watch. The Christmas crocodile didn't mean to be bad. Not really. But somehow everyone fell asleep. Somehow the crocodile slipped away and somehow he ate through the basement door. They found him the next morning in the parlor, looking alarmingly around. Aunt Jane's blanket was gone. Alice Jane's blanket was gone. Aunt Figgy's hot water bottle was gone. Uncle Theodore's Zulu robe was gone. Father's earmuffs were gone. Mother's comforter was gone. The Christmas tree, gone, a blue spruce. All the presents were gone, except for one. Pump his stomach, yelled Elwood. Send for my elephant gun, roared Uncle Theodore. Those were for the orphans, shrieked Aunt Figgy about the missing presents. Look at that crocodile's belly. Oh my goodness. What a mess. What's that, asked Alice Jane, pointing to one small present remaining. If he didn't want it, it must be bad, said Cousin Elwood. Quite so, agreed Uncle Theodore. Aunt Figgy nodded. I'll open it, said Alice Jane, and she quickly tore off the ribbon. December 25th. Dear family, hope you like crocodiles. Love, Uncle Carbuncle. It's from Uncle Carbuncle, cried Cousin Elwood. Good old Carbuncle said Uncle Theodore. Carbuncle at last, breathed Aunt Figgy. But we haven't got an Uncle Carbuncle, protested Alice Jane. Since she was right, no one knew, no one knew what to say. But Alice Jane knew. It meant that the Christmas crocodile had been delivered to the wrong address. And sure enough, the doorbell rang. At the door were two delivery men. Take him away, said Father firmly. The two men hoisted up the crocodile and staggered down the snowy steps to a waiting van. Goodbye, said Alice Jane sadly. The Christmas crocodile snuffled. One great crocodile tear ran down his snout. But then 
he saw the sign on the delivery van. Carbuncle Vegetarian Cafe and Reptilian Petting Zoo. All you can eat. Eat, drink, and be wary. Look at that crocodile. Who's that? Cousin Elwood. That kid. I'll come visit soon, promised Alice Jane as they loaded him into the van. Merry Christmas, cried the delivery men. Merry Christmas, cried one and all. The Christmas crocodile didn't mean to be bad. Not really. He waved his tail farewell, but as the van rounded the corner, it did look rather like the delivery man's cap in his jaws. Can you see him? Well, sighed Mother, peace at last. Yes, agreed everyone, except Alice Jane, who didn't say a word. And look what she did. She opened up the last present. And what did she find? Can you see? What is that? Uh-oh. What's up in Alice Jane's room? And that's the end of the Christmas Crocodile.